What's poppin' y'all? Nothing feels quite as good as vindication, which is what I've been feeling as of late. Not only did Kendrick Lamar kind of get the best or the better of Drake in this beef, but the thing that really, really brought me some joy was being vindicated. Not that this was exposed necessarily, but for the amount of heat that I was getting. So if you guys remember, a few of you were probably here back then, four years ago, maybe more, I made a video where I pretty much premiered the proof, evidence, and put everything together that Kendrick Lamar was the cousin of Baby Keem. At this time, Baby Keem was slightly heating up. He had the Orange Soda song. He had the Die For My B project. He wasn't signed officially yet to Columbia. I think he had this deal with the Sony distributor Orchard. And people were like, yo, this guy's coming out of nowhere. He was a producer on the Black Panther soundtrack, which Kendrick Lamar was the head of. No surprise there. And a lot of people didn't believe it. But after this came out and they collaborated on the song, a couple of different songs, Range Brothers was one of them. And of course, their biggest hit song ever together after that, Family Ties. I proposed the theory that Kendrick Lamar was, he used Baby Keem as a vessel to experiment with his artistry in a way that he didn't want to do and potentially really couldn't even do as his Kendrick Lamar ego. The reason why I proposed this was initially people were trying to say that it was Baby Keem that was writing for Kendrick Lamar during Damn. And this is when I was like, yo, are you guys tweaking for even thinking this? When Baby Keem was 16, sure, he was in some of these rooms. He was probably watching Kendrick Lamar. But when Baby Keem was 16, 15, this guy was playing Minecraft and streaming on YouTube and stuff. Like, what are we doing here? Streaming on Twitch, I should say. And he was playing FIFA and all that. The guy was, he wasn't really too... I wouldn't say he was, wasn't tapped into music, but the guy, he was living a regular childhood life. He wasn't writing for no damn. Like, come on now. And after that, 2016 plus, you guys remember a bunch of people were saying, yo, Kendrick Lamar kind of disappeared for five plus years. Did he really disappear or did he put all his effort into helping out Baby Keem with his career? Because if you look at the dates, so there was a Black Panther soundtrack that came out after damn. Let me just take a quick look. Yeah, Black Panther soundtrack came out in 2018. So that was after Damn. Kendrick Lamar was working on that one. That one panned out really well. After that, that's 2018, we go to Baby Keem. When does Baby Keem come out? His first project comes out 2018. Same year, 2018. He has The Sound of Bad Habit. That's his first project. He has a bunch of different songs on there, gang activities. That was pro I think that was the biggest one. Or no, Baby Keem self-titled was the biggest one. Oh, maybe Kendrick Lamar worked on this. I don't think we have any proof of this as of yet, but there's a possibility. Then there comes Die For My B, right? This is the one that really took him to the next level. This dropped 2018. Keep in mind, Kendrick Lamar hasn't really dropped much since, or hasn't dropped anything really since Damn. Had he disappeared? I don't know. In this one though, there were songs that, <laughs> actually, no, there is proof. So Sound of a Bad Habit, we have the song So What. So What had a reference track leak where Kendrick Lamar laid down the reference track. This was over two years ago. Most recent topic around this is that the full Bullies reference track came out. And Drake stands were trying to use it as somewhat of a diss. They try to say, oh, Kendrick Lamar reference track leaked. So Kendrick Lamar laying down a reference track for his cousin Baby Keem for a song. That makes Kendrick Lamar look bad. And they were trying to say, oh yeah, babe, Kendrick's stuff looks good when Baby Keem laid his pen to it. What? So that just makes Drake look even worse to insinuate that Baby Keem is somehow writing for Kendrick Lamar. I do think at this point, Baby Keem has probably matured in his artistry and can collaborate back and forth with Kendrick Lamar. They've got really, really good synergy and chemistry. But the facts are the facts, which is So What, which was on Baby Keem's first project, was laid down as a reference track by Kendrick Lamar. How many other tracks did Kendrick Lamar help on? I don't know. And in So What, he doesn't have any credits. So none of these tracks that leaked, or these reference tracks that leaked, the actual songs that released had Kendrick Lamar in the credits. None of them. And keep in mind, in 2018, Baby Keem was still trying to pull this whole thing off of, oh yeah, you know, the, the way I got on the Black Panther soundtrack was I just sent an email of a beat pack to the person that was running it. I think it was Punch or somebody. And he expected us to believe that. And some of you fools actually believe that. <laughs> wow, what a picturesque story, right? And at this point, they were, I wouldn't say they were hiding it, that he was Kendrick Lamar's cousin, but they definitely didn't advertise it. They weren't chilling together. They weren't seen together. 
So on the first project, we have proof. So what? Does that mean that's the only track that Kendrick Lamar worked on? No. I'm willing to believe that he worked on most, if not damn near all, of so uh, or of The Sound of Bad Habit, which is Baby Keem's first project. We don't have proof of that, but we have proof of at least one track and that they're family. So we can deduce that he may have had further involvement. I'm not going to go out and say with no proof that Kendrick Lamar did everything. No. Then we have the Bullies reference track, which was a song that was on Die For My Beat. That song isn't the biggest song on there. Orange Soda and Honest are on there. Now, did we just not get the reference track for Orange Soda and Honest? I don't know. But we did get the one for Bullies. And that was Kendrick Lamar. Once again, Kendrick Lamar didn't get any writing credit. So these are two projects, 2018 and 2019, while Kendrick Lamar was on a quote-unquote hiatus. And there was another one where he did the reference track for. There was So What, there was Bullies. And then on the most recent album, which was three years ago, The Melodic Blue, the song 16, which was one of my favorite songs on that album, it's the second most streamed song. So number one, obviously, is Family Ties with Kendrick Lamar. Banger, hit song, undisputable. But it has Kendrick Lamar as a feature on it. And the second most viewed one, or most streamed one, is 16, which is a Kendrick Lamar reference track. So this is absolutely incredible. So he's helped them, and keep in mind, 2021 is when officially Melodic Blue came out. Kendrick Lamar wasn't really doing much at that point. And then 2022, I think he's chilling. And then 2023 is when he dropped his album. So he didn't really take that long of a break. He was just working on Baby Keem's career. And a lot of people didn't believe this at first, but now, come on, it's got to be undisputed that he channels his creativity in this way through Baby Keem. And this is even better proof because Kendrick Lamar is not only talented in his own right, dropping his own hit songs, his own classic albums, but the only evidence of reference tracks that we get about Kendrick Lamar is him creating hit songs for somebody else. He doesn't even need to hop on the feature. The only person we've seen that Drake gave a track to was Baca. He gifted him that track. It was a reference track. Do we know that Drake was the only one that... Did someone lay down the reference for Drake? I don't know. I'm willing to believe that Drake made the track for Baca. That, it wasn't a smash hit. But if we just look at the song, right? Da, something for my name. Live Up To My Name. That was the song. So that song has 94 million, 95 million for somebody that doesn't rap at all. He kind of gave it to him as a... Is it a going away? First day out gift. Let's call it that. We're getting reference tracks of Kendrick Lamar that this guy's making careers and making hits for other people in a level of versatility that I wouldn't say we haven't seen Drake do. Drake is very versatile. But this just adds to the lore of Kendrick Lamar. And this makes Drake look worse if you try to use it as some sort of expose for Kendrick because this only makes Kendrick Lamar look better. Show me some Drake reference tracks. And sure, some people say, oh, they're not out yet where he's given hits to other people, or actually not just given hits, made someone else's career, career across multiple albums. We have a minimum of one reference track for Kendrick Lamar on each Baby Keem project, including a feature that he did, which is on his biggest song. And one of the leakers that actually put these reference tracks out a couple of years ago, take it with a little bit more than a grain of salt. Let's say like a tablespoon of salt. Because this person did leak these songs, so his information could be valid, but it could also not be valid. We don't know for sure. But the leaker said, So What was a 2017-2018 Lucy. It was later on given to Keem for Sound of Bad Habit. Gang activities, opinions, A New Day were also written by Kendrick that I know of and have the actual songs. So this person claims that he has reference tracks for Gang Activities, Opinions, A New Day. That's three more tracks. On that first project done by Kendrick Lamar, if we are to believe this, maybe they'll eventually surface. Then he says, Bullies was 2018 to 2019. Lucy given to Keem for Die For My B album. Stats, Rockstar P, Busser Up, Second Half of Not My Bro are also all written by Kendrick for that album. Again, that I know of and have the actual songs. He probably wrote more. I also have the actual freestyle Kendrick did for Bullies, mumbling and coming up with the flow. Forgot to mention Blue Melodic stuff. (laughs) <laughs> which is the 2021 album Kendrick versions I have is the first half of trademark sexy and blessed and South Africa and these are what this leaker claims to have and he claims that he believes that Kendrick wrote even more so let's just imagine the possibility that Kendrick Lamar actually wrote 80% of baby Keem's career 
or laid down the reference tracks for 88% of Baby Keem's career. That is a massive success. We haven't seen Drake do that for somebody else. Party Next Door is obviously very, very successful. He's the most successful guy to come out of OVO. I would say I, do I enjoy Magic Jordan more? I'd put them up there. I really, really enjoy Magic Jordan. But Baby Keem, objectively speaking, right? When we talk about numbers, their own albums. Hell, if we just pull up monthly listeners, actually, let's, let's test that out. We'll put up Party Next Door. And keep in mind, Party Next Door has been in the game for minimum 10 years now. Party Next Door got 17.5 monthly listeners. Baby Keem's got 21.9 million. Who, who's bigger? I think Baby Keem is bigger than Party Next Door. And this is me being a heavy, 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 heavy Party Next Door music enjoyer. And also being a heavy enjoyer of the music that comes from Baby Keem. Although, you know, Baby Keem is probably not too fond of me, which I completely understand. I wouldn't like me either if I was Baby Keem. Let me put it that way. Although, it's not with any malice. I'm just doing my job. And I like Baby Keem's music. I've wished him success since the first, or not the first project, but the first project that I heard, which was his second overall project. So this is just a W all around for Kendrick Lamar. The one thing, though, that Drake stands can say is when he talks about writers and all that, at least Drake is putting people in the credits. Baby Keem is taking Kendrick Lamar out of the credits. And that's possibly for reasons that Baby Keem was going to get so much flack and maybe his career wouldn't have taken off. People will say, oh, it's kind of like the King Combs thing. That's why his career didn't take off. I think King Combs just, well, the songs that I've heard, which is just the most recent one, which didn't age well, that sucked. I haven't heard many others, but if people did assume that Baby Keem was rich and grew up rich, because Kendrick Lamar's credits are on his song, I could see why he would void that from happening, prevent that from happening. But it is something that Drake fans should have attacked as opposed to trying to spin this nonsensical narrative that somebody's writing for Kendrick Lamar, which we haven't seen yet. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Peace.